Hey guys, welcome to Honeycomb. My name is K.O. and today, you know, we unbox a lot of stuff here. We unbox a lot of really cool hype stuff, but today is by far our most expensive unboxing ever. You excited? Let's do it. Box is down here. It's really big, so give me a minute to get it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. On the address, it's not my address. This is the address of the distributor here in the country. It's a pretty heavy duty box, plastic handles, and a wooden under part. Uh, so we're gonna take off the tape, that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna hope that this was the right way to do it. All right, so we open the top. And, aha, uh -huh. indication that we have a consumer grade machine, it says. Linea Micra Quick Start Guide. Now, I do know that it's called the Linea Micra. That's what we're unboxing today. La Marzocco's newest home espresso machine. The new kid on the block, $2,000 cheaper. It's 100,000 pesos. I believe it's 99,000 pesos cheaper here in the Philippines than their previous home model, the, uh, the Linea Mini. And this is the Linea Micra. I have a reason why I'm gonna be calling it the La Marzocco Linea Micra for the rest of this video. Now, if you wanna know why, watch the rest of the video because I'll tell you at the end. All right, so here's a quick start guide. I wonder if it tells me how to unbox it. Uh, no, it's all just in information how to use a machine. So we'll, we'll look at that later. Uh, and then in the top, you have this accessory kit. Okay, let's, oh, maybe I gotta, yeah, do this first. Uh, there's more literature. This is like the in-depth manual in the different languages. That one we're not gonna read. And here we have the accessory kit. We'll go into that later. Okay. Ooh. Big piece of cardboard on top. The previous model, the Linea Mini, they still show, they still sell that one. Um, it's uh, sold for three hundred twenty something thousand pesos. This one is two hundred twenty thousand pesos. A uh, big foam piece here on top, and there's the machine. I can't pull this out from up here, so I'm gonna have to put the box back down on the floor. All right, okay. Let's do it. Oh yeah. Mm. Woof. Nothing else in the box. But this is a Linea Micra. The little plungers. All right. Woo. This thing's heavy. It's a good thing. All right, power cable. It's got one of those Euro style plugs. Drop that down there. Okay, so the whole thing is still wrapped in this plastic. I don't think it comes shipped like this. It's actually a loaner unit from Yardstick. They asked if I could open it up, help them create a little bit of content. I am an ambassador for Yardstick Coffee, uh, for the Yardstick Coffee Club. They send me coffee. Um, sometimes they send me loaner things like this. And one of my rules for something like that is that I need to be able to say what I think, what I want every time without any sort of editorial review or worry that I'm gonna hurt someone's feelings because, uh, and I'm really glad that philosophically we agree on this. Yes! All right. I'm gonna say what I wanna say and it's better for everyone that that's the case, that we're all just honest about all of the products, all the things that we work with, whether it be machines or coffee or whatever. But I will be producing some sizzle reel for them, uh, a little bit of video about this machine, the unboxing process, what, we're, what we have here, and of course, a little bit of review. But man, this is a nice machine. Woo. Now, before we move stuff around and look at what goes to the machine itself, let's look at this accessory kit. It came in the box. Let's start over here. Let's start with the boring side. We start with the espresso machine cleaner. So 
So every Lomer Zoho comes with one of these and it's always this size. My entire volumetric Strada um, over there, which costs like three, four times the price of this machine, uh, also came with only this amount um, of espresso cleaner. Now it's been years, we haven't used it up. So this is pretty much like a 10 year lifetime supply. And then inside you also get a steaming pitcher. So this is a Lummer Zoko steaming pitcher and it has their logo, their branding right in the front. Um, this is a pretty standard steaming pitcher. Okay quality, should be able to get you a little bit of latte art, some tulip, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of heart uh, action, but for the more delicate, uh, intricate designs, tarsiers and swans and stuff like that, this might not do, but for the home, for the enthusiast, this is a great place to start, good picture included. Then of course you have your tamper. So this is a dome tamper made by Lummer's Oko, fully metal, it's heavy. I'm guessing this is stainless steel, maybe CNC milled or something. Very heavy and polished. Uh, it has Lummer's Oko branding right there in the handle. And then if you look here, the uh, I don't know if you can tell in the video. So basically it's domed outwards. And kind of the idea is that when you press down on the on your portafilter into the basket, it will hopefully, you press down like this, boom, the coffee will also have a little bowl in it when you've done pressing. Hit or miss, the theory behind that is, you know me and Bernoulli's principle, I love Bernoulli's principle. Basically, fluid will move faster along the walls of a tunnel and a basket is like a tunnel. Creating a dome on the top of your, of your puck in theory should allow all of the water to go down at the same speed same rate the problem with that is that we, we really don't know yet what the role of puck expansion is a little bit more complicated than it sounds but that's a theory behind this little dome hammer and then we get to the porta filter now the porta filter on the linea micra is different <laughs> That's probably the best way to say it. Uh, I'll do a full review and explain what I think of it. But in terms of what you're getting, uh, it's not like any other porta filter you've ever gotten. So first, let's open this up. It comes preloaded with the single shot basket. I think it goes this way. All right. So that's your porta filter. Uh, like. Most Lummer Zocos, which do not tamp flat, it has a little lip that you're supposed to tamp against. So you put this down against the counter like, like that, right? And that's the part that makes a contact with the counter. And then you tamp. Into there goes the baskets. You have a blind basket for uh, back flushing for cleaning your machine. That's this one. And then you have What's the difference here? This is the 17 gram basket. And then you have the, this should be an 18 gram basket, I'm guessing. Oh no, it's a 14 gram basket. Oh, they're around the same depth. Gosh, what's the difference between these guys? Oh, it's a little bit shallower. Yeah, it's just a tiny bit shallower. For the most part, you're gonna be using this uh, 17 gram basket. It's a little bit more appropriate. But all of this is 58 millimeter, which means that it is compatible with your with your uh, commercial machines, your commercial espresso machines from Lummer Zoho will be able to fit this into there. And the porta filters from the Strata will be able to fit into the Lummer Zoho Linea Micra as well. So there you go, load it up. That's like a bottomless porta filter. And I think most people are going to use it like this. I think most home enthusiasts like the Instagrams and the videos, the YouTubes of the slow-mo shots with the liquid coming out from this, for whatever reason, you might want to use a single porta filter or a double, uh, a dual spout porta filter for pulling a double shot. And that's what this is for splitting the shot usually. Now, Lumberzoko has done something very unusual and very uh, innovative, but I don't know if I like it yet. I think most people are going to use it like this, as I said. But you load this in by screwing the porta filter 
So you put this in like this, and then it's, there you go, and it clicks in, right? Spouts near the handle. So that's how you load the bottom of the portafilter, filter, and that is made of plastic, okay? It's a little dinky feeling, to be honest. Uh, why did they do this? Well, I think a lot of enthusiasts do want the bottomless portafilter. filter. Uh, this is a way for them to, to be able to bring the price down a little bit, just a little bit. But apparently, according to them, because the Linea Micra boots up really fast, one of the things that is not able to get up to temperature fast enough is the portafilter. So what they did was they made the total amount of metal in the portafilter less or lower thermal mass. And uh, as a result, all of this heats up much faster. And uh, the plastic parts, which are this bottom of the portafilter, because it's plastic, it actually heats up faster as well. And you've seen us talk about that with like plastic V60s and plastic, you know, other plastic brewers. It is a very efficient way of conducting heat and a very stable way of conducting heat. So scientifically, it's a good idea. In terms of like a luxury model home espresso machine, I don't know if this is a great idea. I would have just preferred just the blind, uh, which is how the decent espresso comes. But hey, someone might want it, so might as well include it in the package. Now we've looked at all of the accessories that are inside of the Lomarzoco Linea Micra. Let's move the cameras and look at the machine itself. Be right back. And we're back. Um, yeah, we had to move the cameras around, but as a result, we also had to move a lot of the lights around. So it'll look a, a little bit different, but hopefully we got it nice already to a point where you guys can see stuff. It is a shiny espresso machine, literally. Uh, you can see here, it is very reflective, right? There's chrome everywhere. And it is quite a sight to behold. Now, because of the angle, you might not be able to tell. This side panel is not straight. It's kind of angled upwards. Right, so it's got a huge Italian flair. It's got a lot of the stuff that we love about the about the linear line, but they kind of brought it forward, brought it into the future. Now there's a switch to turn it on over here on the side. I'm gonna turn it on in a second after I show you a few of the features of the machine. Here you have the the hot water knob, dedicated hot water knob. On a regular machine, that would be a second steam one, but because it's only a single group, that's hot water. You have the steam wand controlled by this knob here. And then you have a cool touch steam wand. Now that means that you can hold it, you won't get burned. If you hold the tip, you will get burned. So don't hold the tip, you can hold it by here. But as force of habit, I still use a cloth. I still use a towel to move this around no matter what. It's just good habits. Now that steam wand is angled, as you can see, cool touch. It is angled. Let's twist it so we can get the full angle. And uh, that will allow it to extend outside of the machine because it has this closed overhand design. That'll allow you to see your picture outside. Now it remains to be seen through our testing how this shorter travel here on the design, having that angle there allows you to get your picture up in there and see the milk. Now this seems short. We'll see in our testing and our actual review. This is just an unboxing. What else? Cup warmer on top. And oh, the drip tray comes out. It's actually got these heavy duty magnets on the bottom. So they really upgraded this drip tray. I actually don't know if the, if the mini has those magnets, but this drip tray is really nice. It's got a float in there. So if the, if the water level inside really fills up, it's gonna go all the way up. Right? So it's got a little float in there. And basically that thing floats as the water level rises. And if this thing gets filled up with lots of water, it's gonna pop up. And those little fins are gonna stick up for you to be able to see so that you know that it's time to replace, uh, to drain your drip tray. Now it is a very, very big drip tray. Some drip trays are like this shallow and this is very, very deep probably about five, 600, 700 ml in there. All right, now there is a provision here for a drain. If you wanna kind of plumb it permanently into your household drainage system, you can. Right. Again, this is not intended for commercial use at all. Uh, we've seen some Linea Minis make it into commercial settings, 
Uh, they're not designed for that, but they can handle it. This one, maybe not. Maybe this is really dedicated for the home, but we'll see. People get creative. All right, underneath you have the water tank. And on machines like the GS3, even the Linear Mini, you have to pull this whole thing out. But now they just put a little cap down there so you can pour the water straight in. And I filled that all the way up. You wouldn't do a lot of testing. I'm just gonna close that up. Put this drip tray back. It's gonna click into place. Let's consult our quick start guide. Let's see if I miss anything. You have your cup tray, hot water activation knob, indicator lights are up here, a steam activation knob, hot water spout, steam pressure gauge, brew pressure gauge, the steam wand, the water reservoir we covered, the drip tray, the porta filter, and finally the power switch is over here. Uh, unpacking your new setup, you will need two people to lift the machine. Uh, Sure. It is over 19 kilograms. Oof. When two people lift it, uh, one hand under the front, one hand in the rear corner, plug into a wall outlet, take, uh, fill it up with water. So we did most of this stuff. And then, important, this step must be performed before the machine can be used. Turn on the machine. The water and heating indicator lights will flash, reminding us to prime the machine with water. Move the handle to the brew position to start the machine with water. This must run for 25 seconds until the machine stops dispensing. At this point, the handle can be moved to the off position and the red light will flash, indicating that the machine is heating. I don't know if that's been done already. Again, this is a loaner unit and it wasn't in the original foam. So I think the guys over at Yardstick might have primed it already. But let's find out now. Put the machine on. That's it. So you have the red light, it's blinking, that means it's heating. And then the blue light means that there is indeed water. Put it here, it's just gonna kick in the pump and let the water flow, even though. To me like there is indeed water inside the whole system so it's already been primed and ready to use now supposedly this is a quick starting machine so it should only take a few minutes for that light to stop blinking they say it's around three to five minutes uh, the steam boiler will take a little bit longer to heat up and then we'll be able to see it make steam while that's waiting i'm going to open up the google play store and i'm going to look for the app for the lumberzoco mini and see how easy it is so you only have a few controls on the front, but apparently you can use the, the app that's connected to the machine to be able to control the device. So I'm installing the app right now and supposedly it's going to be able to help me with things like pre-infusion, water boiler temperature, steam boiler temperature. I can adjust all those things. All right. The best part of your morning gets better. Start. Completely new method to control your machine. Always ready to brew a perfect espresso. Next step. Uh, news from Lumberzoco. Learn to brew a quality coffee. The best part of your mind keeps getting better. You have to log in. I'm going to sign in with my Google account. As soon as you open the app and you log in, it looks for machines immediately. So I don't know if it's gonna, if the machine is just constantly broadcasting or is it only broadcasting at the moment you turn it on, but it hasn't found the machine yet. I have a hunch that I might need to turn it off and on again. By the way, you see that red light has stabilized. So in a few minutes, it's taken us to download the app. We should be able to have steam. That should be good. Gosh, that is fast. Okay, so it says first, turn off your machine. And then switch. Before turning on the linear meter, Make sure the paddle is placed on brew. Once the machine is on, make sure to place the paddle back to stop. I'm gonna put this, the machine's gonna turn on, I'm gonna flip it back to stop. And that puts it in pairing mode? 
There's only three controls on the machine. Aha, there it goes. Machine model, micro, serial number, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm just gonna click on it. Trying to connect. And it's loading, loading. Skip Wi-Fi configuration. Um, you know what, set up new network. Let's put this uh, linear on the Wi-Fi, on the Honeycomb Wi-Fi. Saving configuration. It's saving it to the device, to the espresso machine. Oh, it's a lot more complicated than I thought it would be. It's funny, on most home machines, you just get like a button that gets like the temperature and uh, and basically this part. And this, this is a lot of stuff. Uh, I, I imagine it's gonna be cool when it works. But it takes a while to get it to work. You've been here half an hour now. Here in your machine. And finally, are we there? Are we there? Aha! So here we are the app. And we can click on different stuff. Status, coffee boiler is at 94 degrees Celsius. Steam power is at three. And then you can uh, go into settings. You can auto on and off. Uh, temperature. You can adjust the brew and the uh, brew and steam temperature. And then there's also a pre-infusion setting. So here's the problem is that every time it, it uh, you ask it something, it has to ask the machine. And that seems to take a while. So setting stuff up is not as intuitive as you would hope. All right, so that's been it for the unboxing of the Lamarzoko Linea Micra. This is not the review. We will still have a review which won't focus on all these little features and stuff and the unboxing experience. If you have any questions for that, leave them down below or perhaps the review has already been uh, posted and you can check it out on our YouTube page. Make sure that you subscribe Honeycomb Manila on YouTube. You can also follow me on Instagram. I'm at Kosha and follow our drinks magazine at Daily Drink Mag or www.dailydrinkmag.com. All right, so why am I saying Micra and not Micra? Obviously, it's really supposed to be Micra. They're Italian, they're, it's an Italian name. La Marzocco is an Italian name. But I'm saying Micra because I really want for YouTube to be able to spell Micra, M-I-C-R-A, instead of M-I-K-R-A, which is what it seems to be transcribing whenever somebody says the word Micra. I wanted to say Lamarzoco Micra so that when people search for Lamarzocro, M-I-C-R-A, this video comes up. And that's why I'm using Micra instead of Micra. If you want to know more about this machine, the review is coming. We need a few days with it to figure it out. But if you have any questions, ask them in the comments down below. We'd be glad to help whether here or on that video. I wish you guys good luck. I wish you guys good health. I wish you guys some great coffee. Thanks for watching. Peace.